And if I don't have anything to paint, you know, I just sort of, there's something, some kind of, you know, I quite like this kind of enclosure, for instance, of this arm, so, you know, it's just something that I want to try out. Just some, somewhere buried a bit of rough feet in. Oh, oh that's the wrong word, you're not getting any. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you set fire to the bird? <laughs> My time had sort of disappeared, and I think, oh, well, I must have died. And uh, um, so the bird, the bird is, it's the same bird from earlier pictures. Yes, it's yeah. the same, well, same black bird. <clears throat> and um, I have no idea. Of course, you know, I think in my fantasy, I do have sort of to enjoy. Uh, I enjoy cruel things. I mean, you know, maybe in daily life, I'm too too afraid of retributions, either my own feeling of guilt or <laughs> divine retributions. To really act cruelly, or well, consciously at least, but in in painting or in, in image making, I think cruel things are quite funny, and so I, I, I thought it was quite hilarious. This bird sort of, you know, sitting in this cage, being so sort of bird, you know. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't. Even, I don't even throw a stone at a bird, so it's it's quite strange that I have a, I find some cruel things funny in image making. Right. So yeah. do you think you can sort of um, act out what you would like in real life and in your pictures, or no, that, no, no, no? But you know, there is sort of like there's no denying that we all can be cruel or jealous and all this kind of things. And I think it's just the fact that you acknowledge that that's enough. You don't have to act out. You know, I think it's very important to act to more act out kindness and consideration than to act out nastiness or you know jealousy. Yeah. But you know, if you deny it, there is a lot of energy in those sides, and and you could as well sort of say, okay, yes, okay, you know, in fantasy it's there. Uh, so you know, there's loads of things there in fantasy. I have no desire whatsoever to act out. Oh yes, this was also biblical. It just happened with uh, on a print of Rembrandt, of uh, again sort of a woman hammering a spike through his ear, without any cause whatsoever. But like what Rembrandt does, and I sort of like, you know, that he makes it a human situation so far, he concentrates on this woman reasoning, oh God, you know, I've got to hammer this right, you know, so this is not about murder, this is actually from, oh well, you know, the feminine kind of um, urge to, you know, hit that nail right on the head and not on your fingers, which again, you know, so it's quite... But it's just a subject for drawing, and, and I think they can work well because they are... You know, there's violence in them, and there's you know, sexuality in them, and I think it's something quite intriguing. Are you a, a feminist? <laughs> Maybe a little bit, yes. <laughs> but not, not in any kind of uh, bra burning or, you know, uh, because I do like men, but I think, yes, I am. I think you have to be as a woman just to sort of find your own worth at some point, you know, mm. and then... But I'm not one in, in, in series, just a sort of part. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause I know, because um, women do get treated as just as badly as, as men get treated by women in your pictures. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I don't believe in victims. I don't think women are victims or men are victims. But I do think, okay, there is a lot of like, uh, yeah. I never learned painting at art school, I'm a sort of self-taught. And, and, and the first six or seven years, I had this great desire to really become an academic painter. I really wanted, you know, to properly know how to paint, and of course I didn't. So I had to go and look at other people's work all the time. So I would go to a museum and just sort of say, oh, I wonder how they've done that, and just try something out myself to get sort of an equal or, you know, kind of result. Um, and I am very, very slow, so things that it took me a long time before I actually learned how to paint, I guess, you know. Uh, I was quite intimidated by the whole canvas, you know, to make mistakes on it. So, um, you know, Mr. abstract work, at least I could sort of, in a way, clearly fill in the colours. It was more controlled, more graphic. But, and now, you know, I just paint. I don't think of it. I don't, you know, but I think, again, I think it's a very, very essential thing. It is something which, uh, it's very instinctive. I think at some point, the, the, the whole way you work is 
not. It has nothing to do with my head whatsoever, even if I you know, look quite critical. But the whole thing is, you know, sort, of, it's, it sort of comes out of your total kind of being. With the smoke here, is that um, to do with the tidal weight of smoke? No, well, actually, painted this after the after the exhibition was already. Or after the catalog was made, but it was yes, it had sort of like I think the way it was more sort of like I had an, um, also I wanted I wanted to try also technically something out of this kind of thin kind of things coming out of your body instead of like having animals, you know, sort of like it was the next stage. But I haven't sort of gone any further on this. It was just a, 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 an, um, instead of having you know heavy uh, animals or things in front of you, this was like, you know, that in a way things seep out of you. So that was just a, and I really like texture, like, like, um, like this dish, you know, some light paint, you know, this kind of like transparent kind of blouse. So it was really in that kind of what can you do with paint. Are you quite influenced by early, well, at least the way that early expressionists work? The funny thing is, I sort of like, you know, I had already been painting figurative till, and I, I had to teach in China. Uh, I was invited to teach in China, and I decided to sort of start with figurative painting because of the way I had to you know, choose some kind of subject matter. And then I actually discovered the expressionist. I mean, obviously I knew about them before, but I, I just never studied them. And, and that uh, just opened my, opened my world. Uh, and, and the courage, I think the courage in which they really went deep inside themselves to sort of like be able to sort of see what, you know, what we are as people. And I think, you know, I really, really admire that. Yeah. It, it is a fascinating medium between the, um, the exterior world and the interior world mm. to be able to sort of process it first rather than paint literally from it. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of um, someone like Baselitz, who also takes influence from expression? Yeah, but you know, I think Baselitz, you know, his early work I really like, well, even if I'm, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of Mar uh, Marcus Lupert, for instance, who I think is bit much, yeah, better artist. But since he got stuck in his up and sat down pictures, I find it totally tedious. I mean, sort of like, I think, okay, I've seen it. enough is enough, but you know, I think his early work was very good and, and had great integrity and now it has become, I think he's quite an indifferent, repetitive kind of artist. Uh, yeah, he's, at, he's remixing his yeah. little paintings. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't work at all anymore. Yeah, so I think it's very sad. I'm reviewing his retrospective for the next thing. No. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> now, now. Don't switch it on. Okay, this is an interview between Lawrence Fuller and Marcella Hobson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you know. Where's my glass? I want to see that last shot.